Now we finish the first part of uh, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome lecture. We discussed already what is the meaning of multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, the triggering factors, the causes, the pathophysiological mechanism, and the concept map for the development of multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. And now go to the second part, which will include After finishing the pathophysiology of moods, how the patients can develop either primary moods or secondary moods, دلوقتي هنمسك بقى system system starting with a cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular dysfunction ممكن تبقى result من the hypoperfusion ودي في حالة the primary moods أو any hypoperfusion uh, reason for the patients like uh, shock conditions or uh, post-traumatic or whatever result in secondary uh, cardiovascular impairment. The mechanism of developing cardiovascular dysfunction first, inflammatory mediators, vasoactive mediators will cause vasodilatation. As we mentioned before, the vasodilatation will hypotension. Plus, كمان في additional impairment of vasopressin. The vasopressin ده هيعملي more persistent vasodilatation, adding to decreased myocardial contractility and increase in microvascular permeability. Uh, both all these factors predispose to regional hypoperfusion, uh, as in case of sepsis, which interfere with the distribution. Of systemic blood flow, زي ما احنا قلنا قبل كده في ال 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 shifting or the maldistribution of the circulation from non-vital organ to vital organ. The the condition can be more worsen in state of acidosis and hypoxemia. Regarding the gastrointestinal tract, remember in case of sepsis or injury, the bacteria and microorganism. Can be translocated from the GIT system and secrete and release its toxins. Its toxins can be reached to the circulation, systemic circulation, and extending to the inflammatory process. Then septic shock can cause paralytic ileus and can lead to delay in the institutional of. Feeding. That's why you have, as a critical care nurse, you have to start enteral feeding as early as possible within the first 24 hours from ICU admission. Regarding the respiratory system, uh, you have to remember that the bacterial translocation can result in moods. So here, this is a type of secondary moods, while pneumonia and the adult respiratory distress syndrome can cause primary moods to the uh, pulmonary dysfunction. So you have to know that pulmonary dysfunction can be directly predisposed to primary moods. All pulmonary dysfunction can be a, a complication or a, a consequence of another cause and the predisposed to secondary moods. In such case, what what happened in your patients? Endothelial injury in the pulmonary circulation lead to disturbance in the capillary blood flow. This the disturbance in the capillary blood flow we, may result in interstitial and alveolar edema. In addition to increase the neutrophils uh, in the pulmonary circulations may initiate and increase the alveolar capillary membrane permeability and worsen the patient's condition. This leads to ventilation perfusion mismatching. In addition to pulmonary edema and adult respiratory distress syndrome is con are considered as a common manifestation for the patients with multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Uh, finally, arterial hypoxemia will be developed. In relation to the hepatic dysfunction, it can be caused to moods, primary moods, or result or effect from hemodynamic alteration uh, in, in the liver, either direct or indirect insult in the hepatocytes, and then leads to secondary moods. 
while if there is a direct injury in the liver or direct affection of the liver circulation it, uh, actually it will affect the liver function liver is a detox organ which is responsible for uh, uh, discard the toxins from the body so if there is an impairment in liver circulation or there is a liver failure it will cause primary moods you have to remember that hepatic dysfunction always associated with impairment of coagulopathy and hypoalbuminemia both of them can lead to organ edema moreover Liver dysfunction leads to uh, widespread of the bacteria into the uh, systemic circulation. Also, you have to remember that liver failure or liver dysfunction associated with higher liver enzymes, higher serum bilirubin, and altered in coagulation function. Uh, also, uh, 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 as you know, liver is the detox organ, so the liver with dysfunction will impair or fail to excrete the toxins uh, from uh, the patient's body especially ammonia ammonia uh, accumulation will result in uh, uh, encephalopathy regarding the uh, renal dysfunction it can be caused to primary moods or uh, as in case of activation of endothelium with the reduction of the release of vasoconstrictors and vasodilators, or it can be a result from systematic hypoperfusion and in, uh, result in uh, secondary moods. Uh, in, in case of acute kidney injury, uh, there is a decrease in the intravascular volume due to systemic hypotension. Also, direct renal vasoconstriction to overcome this state leads to release also of the uh, cytokines and the activation of neutrophils by endotoxins and other peptides. Finally, all these toxins will uh, contribute to uh, the development of acute renal injury. Regarding the central nervous system, uh, 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 affection of the central nervous system in case of sepsis is very common and can lead to encephalopathy and the peripheral neuropathy in case of secondary moods. Also, the pathogenesis is poorly, purely defined but likely related to systemic hypotension or cerebral hypoperfusion. In relation to coagulopathy or alteration of the coagulation factors in the patients, there is a mild elevation of thrombin or activated partial thromboplastin time with a moderate reduction in platelet count, uh, which is a thrombocytopenia, uh, and finally will contribute to GIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy which is a serious and severe and acute state and it's considered as a life-threatening health problem for critically ill patients. Also, deficiency in coagulation system protein, including protein C and antithrombin C and the tissue uh, factor inhibitors also can cause coagulopathy impairment. Uh, to, su to summarize what we mentioned before, how far the moods affect all body system, you, you will find in this table, each organ system, pulmonary system, cardiovascular system, and renal system. And in the, in the second column, you will find uh, the, the clinical manifestation common among the patients with systematic inflammatory response syndrome. And in the third column, you will find the common uh, clinical manifestation according to each body system uh, uh, and common in patients uh, who developed uh, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. You have to remember all these clinical manifestations and all these signs and symptoms.
in the in this slide also the rest of uh, other body system hematological system hepatic system and the neurologic system also here you will find the gastrointestinal tract system and the uh, uh, metabolic system and finally the immune system